Dear followers, welcome to the story channel. Today's excursion is entitled The Brave Shepherd. The story is one of the interesting and expressive fairy tales. I hope everyone likes it. One of the shepherds had two children, a son and a daughter. And when he sat on the bed and death approached him, he looked at his two sons and said to them, while he was sad for their separation, I did not leave you two but a small house and three sheep, so divide them between you as you like, and be careful not to quarrel over the division. No matter what the circumstances are. And when the father died, the brother asked his sister, What do you like, dear sister? Do you like sheep or a small house? I prefer a little house, replied his sister, so I can to live in it. So her brother agreed, with a satisfied soul, and gave her the small house, and took the three sheep, and went out to search for his luck in this wide world hoping that God would grant him success and make him happy in life. And he said to himself, I was born on Friday. It's a happy day. I asked God to make me happy. And the other said goodbye to his sister tenderly, and the sister bid him farewell while praying for him to succeed and good luck and she begged him to remember her and not forget her. The brother thanked his sister for this supplication, and promised her to always remember her, and to write to her always. He describes to her what he met and what he saw on his journey. The shepherd drove his three sheep in front of him, started his journey, and continued for a long time. Luck turned away from him and did not encounter him. He lived with his three sheep, cared for them, drank their milk, and sold their wool. One day, the shepherd sat sad, showing distress and sadness, at the crossroads of the four roads, when suddenly a strange man passed in front of him, and with him three black dogs, each of which was larger than the other, and said to him, Peace be upon you, O shepherd. I see three fat sheep with you, so do you exchange, and give me the three sheep, and I give you the three dogs. The shepherd replied, peace be upon him. And he smiled despite his depression and sadness, and asked him, what should I do with your dogs? And what's the point? Which do I benefit from? My sheep cost me nothing. Feeding her, while she eats plants and herbs from the road while I am walking. I feed on her milk and sell her wool, and she gives birth to small sheep for me, whose price I benefit from. As for dogs, they need someone to look for food for them and present it to them. I do not have a garden or a small farm, to think of dogs guarding it. The stranger answered him, my dogs are ordinary dogs. They are unparalleled dogs in existence. They will feed you whenever you like, and you will not need to be fed, and they will be a reason for your happiness. Hopefully, the little dog named Sim Sim can bring you a table with delicious food and drink. Anytime you want, the average dog named Seven Night he can defend you, preserve you, and kill any creature that tries to catch evil or harm, and cut it into pieces, 
and the big dog is called a cutter and it is a very strong dog, it can cut iron and steel with its teeth. The shepherd was convinced of this offer, agreed to the exchange, and gave the stranger the three ewes, and took the dogs from him. The three. To test the veracity of this description, he called the little dog, and said to him, Oh, Sesame, I am hungry, and I need food. And when the shepherd finished speaking, Simsim disappeared. Then he returned a few minutes later, with a large Sabbath basket full of delicious types of food and drink. Say hello to the stranger. And they parted from each other. The shepherd congratulated himself on this exchange, and he felt that luck began to smile at him, and he continued his journey, joyfully satisfied with his wealth. One day, the shepherd was walking on the road, and he met a black cart, pulled by two black horses, and over each of them was a black cloak, and the driver was wearing black clothes. Inside the cart, a very beautiful girl, dressed in a black robe, was crying bitterly. The two horses walked slowly, with their heads lowered to the ground, and great sadness appeared on them. The shepherd noticed this sad scene, so he felt that there was something wrong with that. Something, the driver asked, why so sad? And what's the reason? For all this, the driver looked at him, and did not answer the question. So the shepherd repeated the question about the reason for this sadness, so he told him that there is a huge, wondrous beast whose body is the body of a snake. It has two large wings and two sharp tusks. It obliges our country to offer a beautiful girl as a victim every year for him to eat. This year, the lot fell to the daughter of the Sultan, and her father, mother, and everyone in the palace grieved. So the shepherd suffered all the pain for this princess, who was going to sacrifice her and was determined to follow her and work to save her from that strange beast, and he walked behind her until the cart stopped at the bottom of the mountain. The princess got out of the carriage, and she was sad and weeping, and she walked slowly and climbed the mountain to meet the death that awaits her. The driver saw the shepherd walking behind her with his three dogs. So he warned him not to follow her or go with her if he was thinking about life, or if his life had value. The shepherd did not heed his advice, and was determined to climb the mountain with her, and not leave her alone, whatever the outcome. The shepherd climbed the mountain until he reached the middle of the mountain with the princess, and they saw a strange-looking beast. Ugly in appearance, he has a body like the body of a snake, two frightening fangs, and his wings are large, blazing fire comes out of his mouth. And he has come to their side, fully prepared to eat the sacrifices that are offered to him every year. The shepherd did not wait for the beast to seize the princess, but called his second dog, and said to him, Hurry up, O seven of the night, to save the princess from that deadly beast. Immediately the dog jumped on the beast, and a terrible fight broke out between them, and the dog threw him to the ground wounded, and bit him on the neck with his sharp fangs, and he finished him, 
and killed him the evil of his death, then ate him. And nothing was left of him except his fangs, so the shepherd picked them up and put them in his pocket. The princess saw the fierce fighting and the brutal struggle between the dog and the beast, so she was afraid of this terrifying sight, and she fainted, and fell at the feet of the shepherd in fear and confusion, then she woke up from her fainting after the dog killed the beast, and she rejoiced endlessly, he saved her, and saved her country from evil, and from the victim that submitted to him every year. Then she approached the brave shepherd who was the reason for saving her from death, and gave him the most thanks and the most beautiful praise, for accompanying her and working to save her. The shepherd said to her, I have not done anything for which I deserve thanks and reward, and I have not done more than duty. I would have liked to go back to your country with you, but I made a plan for myself to go on a trip around the world, to see its beautiful scenery, and benefit from the experiences I see. I truly promise you that I will visit your country after three full years spent around the world. And I am determined on this trip to see my luck in it. And no one can change what I decided to do. So the princess agreed to his idea, and did not insist on him, and they returned together, and descended from the mountain, until they reached the place where her carriage stood at the bottom of the mountain, and they found the driver waiting. In the cart? The princess bid farewell to the brave shepherd, and repeated her thanks to him, so he bid farewell to her. And she rode her chariot, and they parted from each other, and she brought him the best memory, and he carried her manners and perfection. And she walked on her way to the capital of her country, and he walked on the other side, to complete his long journey around the world, with his three loyal dogs. The carriage returned with the princess, and continued on its way. I reached a bridge on a river of rivers, and after the cart drove to the middle of the bridge, the driver stopped suddenly, then turned to the princess and said, the young man who saved you has traveled to the countries of the world. Together that you insisted on him, and he did not care to come back with you. And you can make a poor boy like me happy by telling your father that I killed the monster and saved your life from him, so he will reward me and allow me to marry you, so I will be happy in this life. And if you refuse to tell him this, I will now throw you into the river, and you will drown and die, and I will come back without you and everyone will think that the beast has killed you, as usual, every year. The princess was afraid when she heard this threat. The criminal driver, and she suffered from him all the pain, because he wanted to force her to lie and change the truth, and tell the untruth. She had to promise him that it was the driver who killed the monster and saved her life. And she determined in herself not to marry him, because he is a traitor who does not know loyalty, a liar who is not honest, and wants to associate others with him in lying. And the carriage returned to the capital, and in it was Princess Salma, untouched by harm, and it was not expected that she would return to enjoying life. The Sultan and the Sultana rejoiced in her return with endless joy, and they embraced their dear daughter with tears of joy falling from their eyes, and the Sultan embraced the fake savior, 
and the news spread in the country, and it spread joy was everywhere. And the black flags hanging on the towers of the palace and on every building were lowered in mourning for the beloved princess, and the green flags were raised in all places, rejoicing that the daughter of the Sultan had survived. And the Sultan said to the driver, You did not save the life of my son alone, but rather you saved every family in the people, and saved it from this sacrifice that is offered to that beast every year. She is your wife, so her life is attributed to you, but the marriage will be postponed for a year, because she is still young. And we will celebrate your marriage in a grand celebration that befits you. The driver thanked the Sultan for his precious gift that cannot be valued in money, and the Sultan ordered to make clothes worthy of the princess's fiancé and it suited his new position in the palace. But the poor princess was at a loss, and in a difficult position, and could now not tell the truth as it was, she promised the driver to tell her father that the driver was the one who saved her, and how does she fulfill this promise, which is a lie in itself. And how do you recognize the true Savior when he is now absent on his journey? The princess was very confused, and she was not happy with the promise made by her father that the driver would marry her, and the circumstances did not allow for the opposition. And she did not dare to trust anyone and mention her secret to him, and explained to him the reason for her grief, and she wept bitterly, and no one knew the reason for her crying. When the year ended, the princess begged her father to delay the marriage for another year. So her father agreed to the postponement to fulfill her wish. The days passed quickly, and this year passed just as the first year passed. So she went to her father and threw herself at his feet, and begged him to leave her for a third year until her condition improved and her health strengthened. The Sultan agreed to her wish, and postponed the marriage. The princess was very pleased with the postponement and was sure that her true savior would return to her at the end of the third year of his journey. The days passed, and the third year ended, as the previous two years ended, and the princess had no excuse left to apologize for the delay, so the marriage date was set, and the sultan ordered preparations for the princess's marriage. Flags of joy were spread everywhere, the lights were on, the musicians were present. And the music began to play, and joy spread throughout the capital, and people came from the country to participate in the celebration, the princess's marriage, and enjoy the celebration scenes. On the day of the princess's marriage celebration, a brave young man, a stranger from the country, came to the capital with three black dogs, and he found flags erected everywhere, and the worst were prepared for every building, and music was playing, and he saw the capital crowded with those who came from the country to see the princess's joy. So he asked about the reason during these celebrations, he was told that the beloved princess would marry that night the driver who killed the wild animal, and saved her life and the lives of the people, so the strange young man denied this news, and opposed this false claim made by the driver, and began telling people that he was the one who saved the princess from danger, 
But he did not listen to me nobody spoke to him, and he was arrested and imprisoned in a prison inside the iron bars. Put the curious young man in. Prison. Sat on a straw mat, sadly ill. His luck, and he thought about it for a long time, and his three dogs started barking outside the prison gates, so the young man called out to him with his big dog, Boycott, and called him, Come, Iron Boy, to help me get out of prison. Immediately, the big dog jumped into the prison window, and started cutting the iron bars from the window until he finished it in a short time. And the three dogs walked behind him, and he was very sad, for the reward will be given to the driver who does not deserve it. And the princess will marry her to the liar who claimed to have saved her. With his dog, his dog is his weapon. He saved her. He is truly her savior, and he is the natural due for this reward. And the young shepherd felt hungry, so he sat down and asked his dog Simsim to bring food. So the dog Simsim went and came back after a while, with a tablecloth on which the Sultan's crown was engraved, and it was filled with all kinds of delicious food, so he ate until the pain of hunger was removed, then the dog returned seven nights to the princess in the palace, and he found the Sultan sitting at the head of the table that had been prepared for the marriage ceremony, and the Sultan, the princess, her fake savior groom, some princes, ministers, and senior men of the palace turned him around. So the seven knights went to the sad princess, and licked her hand in a way of hope or sympathy that calls for looking and amazement. It is as if he is telling her that the shepherd who saved you and saved the country from the evil of the beast has come after the time he set, which is three years. And he expected you to mention the truth and confess it, so that the truth would appear and falsehood would be removed, and you would not marry a lying, treacherous driver. The princess saw the black dog, recognized him, and gave him a warm welcome. He is the one who killed the wild animal, and she was very happy to see him, and she rejoiced greatly at his return, and she understood that her young savior had come, and fulfilled his promise, and here she found the opportunity to confess the truth, and to truly reward her savior. The last of them, and what the brave shepherd did of following her, sticking with her, exposing himself to danger, and killing the beast with this dog standing next to her, and she showed what the driver did of inciting the shepherd not to. His going with her, and his refusal to follow her, and his threat to her to throw her into the river, and drown her if she does not change the truth, and remembering that the savior for her is the driver, and she was forced to silence it, sad, and to postpone the marriage for three years until her faithful and faithful savior returned from his three-year journey, and she told him that now he had come, and kept his promise, and he was the brave deserving of the reward, not this treacherous, lying driver who thought of drowning her in the river and killing her. So the Sultan immediately sent an officer to follow the dog and keep it, and go to its owner, and bring it with him, so he went. The officer was with the dog, and he met his owner, welcomed him, and invited him to meet the Sultan and the princess, and to attend the marriage ceremony. 
So the loyal shepherd went to the Sultan, embraced him, and thanked him for his courage and loyalty. The time of danger until he saved her life, and the shepherd did not need to take out of his pocket the two fangs of the beast that he kept as a memory of this incident, to prove that he was the one who saved the princess. As the case does not need evidence and proof, the princess confessed the truth, and those present admired the loyal shepherd. The brave. At that time, the traitorous driver turned yellow, and his color changed from shame and disgrace when he saw the young man who saved the princess from the beast, and heard the bitter truths that the princess stated, and he asked the sultan for pardon and forgiveness, and forgiveness for the crime he thought of committing, and for the false claim he made and his attempt to kill the princess, and drown her in the river. Everyone despised the driver, and they almost killed him, had it not been for the intervention of the loyal shepherd, and his plea to the sultan to expel him. So the sultan contented himself with expelling the driver who tried to kill the princess, and the loyal shepherd replaced him, and he sat next to the princess to be her husband. And there everyone was, and the princess was delighted. A lot. This time, she did not want her father to delay the marriage. She was sending him so that he would bring her real savior from his long journey, and he came after three years as promised. The princess postponed the marriage for three years until he attended, and no one but the princess knew the real reason for the postponement. The loyal shepherd married the loyal princess, and lived. The couple is living happily ever after. The loyal shepherd did not forget his poor sister. He thought of her? and sent her a special carriage to fetch her, and sent her a present of precious clothes, and costly jewels. So she came by carriage to her brother's palace, and her brother and the princess received her warmly, and welcomed her very much. And her brother took her in his arms, because he longed for her and to see her. And he always remembered her in his estrangement, and he did not forget her for a single moment, and how could he forget his sister? Then one of the three dogs said to the faithful shepherd, Our duty is over. You don't need us, sir, anymore. And we have waited until we see your feeling towards your sister in the days of your happiness. And we have realized that you are brave and loyal, and you have never forgotten her, and you have reached all that you wish for good luck. After the dog finished speaking, the three dogs turned into three birds that flew in the air. May God grant the couple success in their happy life, and the loyal shepherd's sister shared with them their happiness and joy. Here the story has ended, until another meeting in the next story. Do not forget to support us by subscribing, liking the video, and leaving a comment to encourage us.